I remember exactly what was going through my mind. It was, what is a Kuwait and why is that important to me? I had just uh, checked out in the A-10 while I was flying out of Myrtle Beach. So I'd just gotten my training and I came back uh, to my hometown, got married, went on my honeymoon and it was the morning I walked into the squadron right after my honeymoon. Everybody's crowded around the TV and uh, they were saying, hey, new guy, did you hear about Kuwait? And I'm like, what's a Kuwait? They said, well, it's not there anymore. Uh, Iraq overran it last night. And I was like, why is that important to me? And they said, well, because we have our exercise we did every couple of years where we would go over and stage out of Kuwait. And we, the premise of it was uh, defending Iraq from an attack from Iran. So now here's Iraq has rolled over Kuwait. Eventually they said it was their 19th province, all that. And it was, uh, we knew we were gonna go over because we were gonna have to repatriate Kuwait. So that was gonna be our mission. In fact, when we came into work that morning, there was already, I should have known something was up because there was a bustle around the base down there. And the security forces had already left town. The hospital had already left town. And they brought in reserve units to activate them to fill in those positions. And our sister squadron was already standing up. So we spent the next three or four days doing nothing but getting that squadron, the Alpha Squadron. It was uh, the Panthers, our sister squadron. But we're getting them ready to go over. And then we were actually the C Squadron. They were getting the demons for the, for the B squadron, get them ready to go over. But our commander leaned forward so much that he got us prepared ahead of them. So we ended up going over and the demons stayed back. They came over later in the game, but so that all, I think the invasion was August 2nd and by August 9th, we were on our way across the ocean. When the Vietnam War ended, I was still in elementary school. So, but I remember reading about it in my weekly reader. I had my Uncle Pat again. He actually flew the HH-53 Jolly Green Giant rescue helicopters in Vietnam in the early 60s, early part of the war. Uh, and I had a, another uncle that had joined the National Guard to actually try to avoid going over to Vietnam. So that, and we had two doors down from us was a house full of hippies, you know, and I remember seeing, uh, the protests of my parents always, you know, being, you know, upset about what was going on over there. Uh, so that was all we really had. That was our vision of what war was like, you know. And since Vietnam, there wasn't much else that had happened. We'd had Grenada, we had Operation Just Cause down in Panama, but that was really about it. And so we, we kind of, we had our own mindset that this was going to be like Vietnam ourselves, but we also my, most of my friends are military and we're like, okay, we're gonna go do what we're trained to do. You know, this is, um, this is what we're here for. So we did have, I had one girlfriend, ex-girlfriend that was going to protest, you know, and I'm like, they're having protests over this? And so I found out about that and they were saying no blood for oil and stuff like that. But um, we kind of, our sentiment was high. We would just stay in mission focused and getting ready to go over, then we went over. Once we got over there, there was no, we didn't have CNN until the beginning of January. So we were, all the news we were getting, and there wasn't internet, and uh, was just, you know, people send us newspapers or tell us what they thought was, you know, we got out of town so fast, we didn't know how other people were feeling back here. But one thing that did, uh, that was different for us is, we remembered what we were taught in history class about Vietnam War was that the decisions were made back in the, um, by politicians, you know, uh, Johnson, President Johnson had a meeting every day where they would pick the target set over in Vietnam, you know, and you got the commanders in the field out there that uh, should actually be making the decisions. And they also, they didn't give the troops a lot of information. We had three days before the actual uh, hostilities started we had General Glossen came down and got us all in a big hangar and they briefed us on the first like 10 days of the war. And we're like, wow, I can't believe they're telling us all that. And then he said, um, questions, you know, any questions? So we started asking questions and they just answered our questions. And we couldn't believe that either. Wow, they're gonna give us the real information. So we kind of felt like uh, they had already like, you know, fixed a few things that um, 
mistakes we'd already we'd made in Vietnam. So.